All right, so welcome everyone to Friday Night Live with John and me and all of you. <laughs> um, glad that you could all join us tonight. And um, I will start with our announcements. So we are going to, where are you? Okay, we're gonna do a detox together. Anybody that's interested, um, we're going to start pre-cleanse on April 1st. So right um, for those who celebrate, uh, yeah, it's no fooling, not an April Fool's. We are going to start April 1st for um, those who celebrate the, the holiday well, right after Easter. So send all those leftovers home with anybody else. So you can uh, start your pre-cleanse on Monday and you can call us and... Um, Order your product if you're out of the area, if you need your fiber cleanse and detox, slender aid and enzyme, um, or if you're local, call and schedule a time to come in and uh, yeah, have, have a well check. Specialists. Do not. Do you want to? Sure. Okay, John wants to offer a special on our detox. 10% off. Your price. If you're on here. For you, for anybody that's on here. 10% yeah. off your cost of a um, detox kit, slender and enzyme. Okay. So I just making notes. <laughs> More the merrier. All right. We all need to get healthy together. Um, for those of you who are on Facebook and not on our community page, please join us. And, uh, share your questions and comments and you know meals that you prepare so others can see how easy it is to be healthy and we we can all support each other we offer custom meal plans if you're struggling with what to eat um, we can help you we can create a one week or one month meal plan for you breakfast lunch and dinner um, with a shopping list and easy recipes. So if you feel like you're in a rut, um, let, let us know. We will um, we'll help you with that. It's $25 for a week plan and $75 for a month or for four weeks. Our next Zoom call will be Friday, April 19th. And the topic will be TBA to be announced. To be announced. Okay. So we'll all be just waiting for that one. The all months right. go so fast. It's just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It is. They do. So all right. So that's it for my announcements. And we're gonna start talking about emotions and how your feelings buried alive and never die. Read that again. Say it out loud. Okay. <laughs> You ready? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is on you now. <laughs> I've done my part. <laughs> okay. Welcome everybody. I'm so glad to see the numbers of people that are on. And um, really wanted to talk about things that I see and Patty sees and Ashley sees when we we do our um, clients uh, zytos and we talk to people and it's all about emotions and we all have things in our mind that are buried there. They just sit there. And for the most part, we all try to be um, tough. We try to hide it. We try to suppress it. And we just don't want other people to know that we have issues. That everybody, that's every single person you come into contact day in, day out, have things going on in their in their lives, which is creating emotions, whether it be positive, negative, uh, and the different emotions. But the most important thing about it is, it's not just about the emotions. What's happening is that all these emotions, these negative emotions that we bury into our mind, and we just think that, you know what, if I just ignore it, if I just don't talk about it, if I uh, pretend, um, be on stage that they'll go away and they don't. We all need to understand that uh, that we have to release it. And I don't care who you are. 
uh, I always tell, say, you know, we look at people and, for example, when you went to school, most of us thought our teachers had it all together. They were just, you know, they knew everything. They, they were perfect people. We look at our pastors. We look at our uh, clergy people the same way. And I deal with a lot of these people, uh, clergy, attorneys, medical, doctors, et cetera. And when we really break it down, they, we're, we're all the same. We all have our problems, a little bit different perhaps, but have the problems that we really don't want to talk about. And tonight we want to talk about what is it doing to us? What do we need to do to try to overcome the to them or through them? Because that's the important part. You've heard me say many, many times that um, when we work with people, we work with all aspects of well-being, and that's physical, emotional, and spiritual, okay? And our spiritual beliefs can help our, um, our mental health. Uh, our mental health can definitely improve our physical health and our physical health, our spiritual health, et cetera, because it all comes together and it all works um, as one. And as I said to people, there's absolutely nothing in our body, emotionally or physically, that isn't connected to something else. Um, so what I want to do is, somebody just said we've been cutting out. Is anybody else having that problem? Yes. 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 Okay. Not really. Okay. What? All right. Um, well, we are connected to the internet. Okay. It's a nice, clear day. I don't know. Well, sort of clear. Okay. Message if you can. Here and I can always read know what's going on, but we are connected. Um, so, all right. So moving along, what, what are emotions? Uh, you know, what are they? And a lot of times we look at people that have issues going on and they, we say, um, um, you know, this person has this problem or that person has a problem. And we don't realize really what, what is going on with people. Uh, but emotions are, are nothing more than conscious mental reactions. The ones we most uh, think about is things like anger or fear, uh, grief, uh, envy, those kind of things, okay? Uh, and normally it's always directed towards something. Uh, normally it's an object, uh, a, a person, a situation, uh, and when all that stuff happens, then what, what goes on, we, we end up with a, uh, a, a change in, in our body, whether it be behavioral or psychological. And that's what creates the change. Most of our emotions happen because uh, we're just juggling so many things in our life, whether it be relationships, work, uh, faith, whatever it might be. And we're trying to balance everything. And most of us, at times, we want to be everything we can to everybody. Uh, we, we don't want anybody to know that we have an issue or that we have a problem. Okay? So what we need to do is we need to understand what happens to our body when our emotions um, become out of range. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. I want to... I want to Stress the fact that we're always going to have emotions. Emotions become overwhelmed. They become out of line. Then what happens is that's when it starts to, to break us down. And most of us know when it happens, but sometimes, sometimes it happens because it's in our subconscious and it's been there for a long time. Uh, it might be from childhood. Different things that happen in our childhood that we that we have suppressed because we think now we're adults and it's not going to matter or should just go away by itself. But that's not really the case. Uh, um, and our emotions affect our organs, our spine, and our teeth, okay? Not to say anything about our brain, but it affects everything. And the longer that we do this, 
the worse it becomes. So when, when we say emotions, I want to use kind of go down the road with grief. Okay. And I, I, I use this one because <clears throat> when we grieve for something, normally, and if it's somebody that passes, who are we grieving for? Most of the time we're grieving for ourselves. If we believe in the, in the, higher spirit, and I'm, I'm a Christian, I believe in the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, that when I leave place, so I've been asked before, why don't you get upset when somebody passes? And I say, because I believe that they're in a better place. So I'm happy for them. And that's some of the ways that we need to, <clears throat> excuse me, that we need to, um, Get in our mind so that we can let go of them and break down our system. Okay. So, what we're going to look at is some of the different emotions. And this happens to be a, um, uh, a Zyno scan that um, we did on somebody. I think it was Patty. No, just kidding. No, <laughs> it was not um, me. <laughs> so, you can the see. Client. Not to be named. Yeah, probably not to be named. Ah, the person had a very, very low range. If you look at the top, there's a range of 0 0.01, and that is extremely, extremely low range. That means a person is very tired, very lethargic, okay? But then you're going to look at and you're going to see the word complacency. Now, complacency means that... It doesn't mean the person is complacent. In other words, let's hypothetically say it was Patty's. It wouldn't mean that she, you know, doesn't care or that she doesn't um, want to be involved or she doesn't want to help. All right. Normally, it means that in her mind, she is very, very concerned with situations where somebody is not doing the things that, that they should be doing. So we, we are bothered by people are complacent. They're just not doing what I think they should do. So my question would be to her, okay, then why does it matter to you? Why do you worry about it? And if it's somewhere that you're shopping and the people aren't checking you out as like they should or they're, whatever it might be, you need to say to yourself, I'm going to go somewhere else. And what happens is when you have complacency and you see the little picture, and what happens in our mind is, you know what? If people aren't going to do what they're supposed to do, what's the point of me doing it? And that's where we, we become thinking different things. Instead of saying, I don't care what, Joe Smith does or or Mary whatever does, it doesn't matter to me. I know what I need to do, and that's the person has a, a score of 170.32 and their range is 0 0.01. So that means that is something that's really bothering them, whether they want to admit it or not. The next one is hopeless. And again, it does not mean the person that's being tested is hopeless, okay? Because one time I told somebody hopeless was in the, it was a woman, she said, I'm not hopeless. And I, it doesn't mean that. What it means is that in your mind, we have given up on something. Something that we just say, I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Nothing is going to change. I might as well just accept it whatever, let it go, uh, or it doesn't matter. But it does matter because you see the range is 133.02. And again, that is something that's really weighing very, very heavy on their mind. Uh, tense, if we're overly tense, normally our tryptophan levels, our melatonin levels uh, are going to be off because we're always fighting the, what I call fight or flight mode. Uh, cortisol is high, and we're always tense. We're always wondering what's going to happen next. 
And I think we get into that in relationships. We get into that in workplaces, different things that we're always wondering, am I, am I doing enough? Am I um, okay with things? So we become tense and we, and we carry a lot of weight on our shoulders. We, we tense up, our neck starts to hurt, our back starts to hurt because we're always tense. And hate, and again, it's not saying that somebody, whoever was tested on this, hates. People always say to me, I don't hate anybody. Well, no. Totally dislike about things that are going on in our life, in our world, and we worry about them to the point where it destroys the heart. And, and people that carry that kind of stuff, whether it be... Uh, hate or anger, et cetera, they will end up with cardiovascular issues, liver issues, because those are the organs that pertain to those particular um, emotions. And so emotions, we're always going to have emotions. But what we need to do is we need to look through those emotions and basically sit back and shut our eyes and say, how does it matter to me? If the world ended tomorrow, would it matter that somebody isn't doing what they're supposed to do or or this situation that I have that I don't see, whether it's a, a relationship or whether it's a job or whether it's a finances, in, in the scope of things, is it worth sitting there worrying and not changing things, but just worrying about it to destroy my health? And that's really the way that we, we have to get away from these emotions and unload them. Because people always say, oh, how? And the only way we can do it is if we do it ourselves and talk to ourselves so that we, we can look through the problem and realize that most of the time we are holding on to the problem ourselves. Okay? It printed, so it goes to all of the emotions. Okay. So it goes through, okay, so it goes through all the emotions. So you can see by the little picture, excuse me, what kind of what organs um, um, are affected, okay, uh, to a degree. But when they're in range, being a uh, problem, like this person has no problem with greed or guilt or frustration, uh, fear, anxiety, all right? So... They're okay for the most part in those categories. What we need to look at for each individual is the ones that are high for this person, at least the top three, to say, what can we do to release that tension off of your body? So when a person, for example, um, has a stress complacency, it affects their total detoxification system. In other words, the body is not going to let go of waste that's in the body. It's just going to hold on. It affects tooth number 22 and tooth number six. It affects the liver and the gallbladder. When we carry, uh, for example, hate, there's a whole bunch of them. I mean, uh, mostly teeth. I would say, instead of reading one, two, three, four, uh, eight or nine different teeth that it affects, and it affects a bunch of the um, the right. yeah the vertebrae. I'm sorry, <laughs> the vertebrae. Okay, the thoracic especially ten, twelve, seven, and eleven. So it's that part of the spine that it affects. Um, it also affects the stomach negatively, the small intestines, the heart. Uh, and I already said the stomach. Uh, now, if, for someone who feels hopeless, there's only one thing that affects, and that is another emotion which creates sadness. And when people carry sadness, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, when they carry sadness, so once you get in that hopeless state, and then sadness sets in, so now it, that affects about 20 th different things. Teeth, uh, vertebrae, the gastrointestinal system, cortisol levels spike up, et cetera. And when people are overly tense, it affects the uh, hormones. So that is 
some of the things. And it goes on all the different ones, um, whether you're, if somebody's jealous, if you're a jealous person, taking a beating. Only uh, your teeth take a real hit. And so people that are lonely all the time or stay, excuse me, stay away from people, uh, that type of thing, or just feel abandoned, they'll they'll have dental problems ultimately, as long as they let that let, let that go. All right. So if anybody has questions, you can message or you can uh, just unmute and ask questions as I we talk. It doesn't bother me in the least. Okay. So how what do we do? The easy version is let it go. Okay. Let it go. But that's easy said, but it's difficult to do. And when you when you bury the emotions, like we said in the beginning, they will never ever go away. They're always right there. They're just on the verge. And sometimes most people, if you think about it, we've all done it, where somebody, a friend, uh, uh, a relative, somebody will say something and all of a sudden you get upset or you get sad or somebody will cry and you go, what's wrong? And they go, I don't know. Well, what happened is whatever was said or done hit a nerve. The other person doesn't know that that happened. It might have been a joke, okay? But if somebody jokes about something towards you and that was something that's been buried in your mind, it comes out, it snaps, and then we start feeling bad. So if you were, let's say as a child, you were told, I don't know, that you um, weren't worthy, of anything, or you weren't going to mount anything. And somebody makes a joke about something in that vein, sometimes people will get all, all upset. And they don't even know why they're upset, but it's because there was an emotion that's been in the mind that, that it hit a nerve, okay? And the problem with that is, by carrying this and letting that happen, we get upset with somebody, so we ultimately end up taken out on somebody who had absolutely nothing to do with it and has no idea that uh, it bothered you. And they would have no way of knowing because we don't communicate. We don't let people know. So we need to, we need to work on how to let things go and what we need to do. First and foremost, before I get into this next one, we need to work at practicing letting go. Okay, we got to practice it. it. It takes work. It's not something you say, okay, um, I've been mad at my ex for X number of years, and you know what? I don't care today. And that doesn't work, okay? So we need to practice perpetual forgiveness, okay? One of the hardest things in the world to do is to forgive. Now, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody does something wrong and everybody gets hurt by somebody or maybe by everybody in the in the long run, all right? We have to learn to say um we we have to learn to say forgive. I can forgive it. Even if we feel the person meant it, we have to forgive it. If we don't forgive, it's going to stay with us. So whenever you start thinking you're upset with something, just ask yourself, is it worth not forgiving? Is it worth holding a grudge? Because most of the time, the person that's holding the grudge is a person that gets hurt. The other person doesn't even know or maybe doesn't care that you have this issue with them. Okay? So we have to practice perpetual forgiveness. Now, I... I read um, something that says the Jewish religious practice says forgive three times, three times. However, in scripture, it says in the Bible, Jesus says forgive 77 times. Okay, so we have to practice forgiving. Um, I, one of my best friends in the world, I will tell you, is sitting right next to me. Yeah. 
Okay. I thought you can talk about Kenny. No. Okay. <laughs> Patty has been a friend of mine for 19 years. Oh, yeah. We yeah. have. Okay. Uh, but if if we, both of us didn't, didn't say, it doesn't matter. It was a different, it was a difference of thought. I was a miscommunication and you hold the grudge. We'd never be able to work together. Never. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because then trust gets lost. All kinds of things starts happening. And most of it is imagined. We imagine it after a while. All right. So we have to say, you know what? I say to myself all the time, I know Patty was wrong and I forgive her. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So practice Practice perpetual forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Next. Forgive for your sake, for your sake, not necessarily for the other person's sake. All right? Because as a message, forgive for yourself. Don't, um, uh, don't hold it um, and think, okay, I'm going to let go of this for, for the other person. No, do it for yourself. And most of you have heard me say over and over, number one, take care of yourself. So when we talk about this emotions, you have to do, let go of it, forgive for your sake, for nobody else's. If you're forgiving and you're saying, I'm doing it for uh, that person, you're wrong. You're wrong. You have to do it for yourself or, or it does not work, okay? And and you just have to do what you can do. That's all you can do. You forgive. If the other person doesn't change or doesn't, then you just need to walk away and it's not a problem. All right? So it's you that we have about. It's ourself. It's Forgive for my sake and then move forward. Next one. Get the poison out. Okay? Get it out. Let it go. Don't. And I struggle with this sometimes, okay? Uh, it comes from my, basically from my childhood. But I, I, I've had stuff in my mind that I just carry. Okay? And it's stuff that happened as a child. And I look at myself and I sometimes I say, I'm at this age and I'm still bothered by it. But that's what the brain does. And the, the, the more we carry it, the deeper seated it becomes. It becomes repetition. If I sit and say, you know what? My mother told me I was never going to be any good. And I go on and on and I just keep repeating that. What happens is that just becomes my, my motto for myself. I'm not any good okay people don't like me whatever it was as a child or whatever it was or maybe in a marriage or relationship that lasted for a long time you heard over and over and over it's repetitive and we all know that we learn best by repetitiveness okay so if we keep on saying telling ourselves that we're not whatever somebody said and number one we don't forgive them for it then it becomes us. So you, you have to let the poison out. Uh, and you can't bury it. And if you do, it will leak out slowly but surely. Every time Patty says, you know, you made a mistake. Yep, yep. My mother told me I'd always be wrong, okay? So we get that way, all right? Patty never tells me I'd do anything wrong, but... Because I know how evil he'll <laughs> It's easy. <laughs> um, so, so get it out. Don't bury it, okay? Because we know it will leak out somewhere. It's going to come out whether you want it to or not. So just flush it out. Get rid of it. The next one is don't let the poison in. Don't let it in, okay? When things happen to us, what we need to do is say, it doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter. So when I was in Vietnam, there was a, a saying, um, and I won't use all the words because it was, you know, we were young and foolish and 
a little crude, but it was, it does not matter. Okay. When people died, when people got hurt, the rest of us would look at each other and say, it doesn't matter. It's okay. It doesn't matter. And that's the only way people could get through it. Otherwise, you would see the carnage and you would say, I'm next. And that would destroy you. So you have to use that model. Don't let it in. Leave the, the, the scenario, get away from it, and move forward. And when I say move forward, don't think about what happened. Move forward. Look at the bright side. There's always a bright side of everything. No matter what happens, there is a bright side. Okay? And that goes for everything. I always tell people, people say, you know, a storm went through and, and destroyed property and destroyed this or that. And um, the town or whatever is devastated. And never going to come back. Not true. Some people are going to make money. The carpenters, the, the realtors, all those, it's it's a boon for them. So there's a bright side to everything. And everything that we do, there is a bright side. So move forward. Look for that sunshine. Look for that thing that, that's happy, not the depression, not the, oh my gosh, look, it's probably going to have, uh, what's going to happen? We People do that with their health. What if I get sick? What if I get cancer? What if I, if we live that kind of a life, we're destroying ourselves. We're destroying our own organs, which will ultimately become okay, so problematic and probably break down to a point where um, we're going to get the disease that we dread the most. All right, thanks. So we have to look at the positive side. Okay. And the next one, which is number five. give birth to something better. And that kind of goes back to what I said, look at the bright side, okay? Just think, it's a new dawn. It's new. When we get into spring, we say, oh, spring, it's new. Winter is past. Kind of think of it that way. The hard part's over. But any time that we go through a struggle in our life, in our mind, look for the positive and, and give birth to a new idea idea that I can come up with that that puts all that back in the in the garbage can. All right. You know, some I don't I'm not feeling well. Okay. If we harbor on it, we're probably going to feel worse and worse and worse. But if we move forward and we give birth to the idea that you know what? I don't feel well, but if I do this and this and this, I I will feel better. And I, I'll give you, go back to most of you know my situation. Um, um, but I almost almost you already know how to do. And that gave me new light and said, you know what? You're right. And that changed my whole perspective of instead of thinking, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? It was, let me hurry up and do this so that this will happen. And that was the positive side. Negative thinking leads to negative actions, negative health, negative everything. When people are always negative and worrying, they will end up sick. You cannot be well and make the mind and overload the mind. It just does not, will not, and cannot uh, happen. Okay. Um, I, something you said before about Putting it in the past, it made me think you've talked about like the windshield versus the rearview mirror. Mm -hmm. It was a reason that the rearview mirror is small because it's behind you. You don't need to dwell on it. The windshield right in front of you is as big and wide and a uh, new, um, new avenue to look at. So, uh, yeah, are you are you holding on to something that that you realize is hurting you? Okay. Are you, are you just can't let it go no matter what it is? Um, so try to let go. I know some of you are saying that we're um, breaking, up a breaking up a little bit.
This is recorded, so if you want to listen to it again, you can. I don't know where, where, if there's anything we can do at this moment. Okay? you got to let go. you got to move forward. you got to practice the perpetual forgiveness. You have to forgive whatever that, that thing you're holding on to. You have to let go of it and, and change it just for your own sake. Uh, let If the poison is already in, you have to just get rid of it. You have to let it out. All right? And then look for something bigger and better. Okay. Um, so you need to unclutter your mind. How do you do that? Because you'll never, ever be at peace if your mind is a noisy place. I tell people all the time, quit listening to the, to the white noise. Mm -hmm. Okay? People will t say things. Everybody's an expert in everything that involves you. They'll tell you what you should do. You know, people try to tell me what how I should run my business. Never run a business, okay? And I, I've learned to say, you know what? <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. That's your opinion. I know what I do, et cetera. So I just move forward. Okay. So it's time for intervention. Okay, so what does intervention mean? Intervention means sometimes you need to sit down and you need to talk to somebody. You need to just, just sit back and, and let somebody that can help you. I'm not talking about the mailman that doesn't know anything about this, okay? I'm talking about an expert who can walk you through some things and help you unclutter the mind. Just like sometimes we hire people to unclutter our closets or anything else, sometimes we just need some outside help and guidance. The problem is that a lot of times we don't want to admit to ourselves or anybody else that I need help. Okay? And that where it becomes dangerous. So what happens is we start beating ourselves up. Okay, you know what? I I need to change this, but I don't know how to change it. I don't know what to do, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna reach out for some intervention because uh, I'm embarrassed. Well, that'd be like if you want to lose weight and you're embarrassed because you you weigh too much. The only difference is people can, might be able to see you weigh too much, but in our mind, people don't see it be, until you snap or do or say things that um, make people realize. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to, for intervention, whatever it might be. And I'm not saying you have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars, but you don't. But sometimes we need intervention. Somebody will listen to us and help us. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, um, who fights your battles in life? Okay. Who fights them? Um, what this means is we have to get rid of the what if syndrome. What if? Those are the battles in life we face. What if? Um, somebody said to me that they were watching the news the other day and, and they heard that Russia was ready for a nuclear war. And they said, what if it happens? <laughs> Unless you can step out and grab the rocket or something, there's nothing you can do. You're fighting yourself. You're worrying yourself to death, okay? So you are the one who fights your battles. And you have to pick and choose what is worth fighting, what is worth taking on. The things that aren't and that you can't control, you can't change, you have to unclutter. You have to get rid of it. If you're in a relationship and the other person just will not or you can't connect, you gotta, you got to just step away. And I don't say mean divorce or sometimes you just got to step away for a little bit. You got to get in the car and go for a ride and, and, and just do what you got to do to let your mind calm down. Because if you stay in this situation, this is said, and then that's said, and then this. And all of a sudden it becomes more and more in the mind. We become angry. We become hurt. And or we're going to do something that hurts somebody else and then we're going to feel guilty. All right. So it just continually grows. So you have to fight your own battle and pick your battles that's worth 
fighting. And most of the time, what we carry is not worth fighting. Um, so you don't want to talk about how big your enemy is, okay? You want to talk about how big and strong you are or how big and strong your God is. Whatever it is, that's what you want to look at. Don't look at the, the person that's harassing you at work or whatever. Don't worry about that. That's, that's my new, you're stronger, you're better. You don't need to worry about it and move, move forward. Okay. And the next one is just do your part. That's all you can do. You, uh, I mentioned the complacency, just do your part. You can't worry about what everything anyone else does. You just have to do what is right. And I, my motto to me as I get older is if I just do the right thing for myself and for the people around me, everything will work out. And the people who don't see it that way, then they don't need to be in my life. Okay. They don't, it's not worth it to them or to me to try to conform. We don't want to be a chameleon. We don't want to just fit in with anything and everything. We, we have our space. This is what I am. This is what I do. And therefore, I just do my part as best I can. And knowing in my heart that it's the right thing to do at the time I'm doing it. And then if I realize later on I made a mistake, I apologize, I forgive, or whatever it might be. And then because that's the right thing to do at that time. And if you do it that way, you're not going to be carrying all this what if Patty is mad at me? What if she's angry? What if she thinks this about me, et cetera? And that's just too much for most of us to comprehend and too much for us to take on because we we have too many other things in our life that is creating a burden on us that we don't need to make our own burden. Just do what I can do, do the right thing, and then move forward. Okay. Okay. Uh, in order to do it, you have to know what your job is and what your God's job is. My And most of you know that where I come from in this, I have learned a good number of years ago to give it up. I can't do it. Okay. I always thought when I was young, I was strong. I could do it all. I And I realized that's not my job. I can only do what I can do. And I know that not everything is going to go my way. We always have to remember not everything is going to go your way. There are going to be things that are going to happen that are out of your control. Um, somebody's going to um, pull out in front of you and there might be an accident. There might be, you, you might trip and fall on the steps or something happens, but the, Things aren't going to go our way, and it's just the way life is, but we can't worry about it. When it happens, we fix it. When when before it happens, or odds are it'll never happen. So we clutter our mind with this worrying about what may or may not happen. So we just have to know what our job is and do our job, move forward, give up what we can handle, and take it from there. So for those people who have more questions about emotions, the best thing I can tell you is to do a Zyno scan. And I will tell you that since COVID, emotions have just been outrageous. And I don't know if it was COVID itself. I don't know if it was the way things were run and, and being secluded. I don't know. Okay. That I'm, I'm not an expert at. But I do know that emotions are playing a, a tremendous, tremendous role in our our well-being. Okay. Um, and Ashley, thank you. And Ashley mentions an evox. All right. Evox is where we we scan. Okay, that was the next slide. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Ashley, thanks. <laughs> um, uh, Sorry. So this is <laughs> no. Oh, excellent. Great segue. I thought you were planted. <laughs> um, mm. Perception reframing. Okay. And we scan the emotions 
And what happens is it'll tell us the things that we most need to work on. There's a couple of people that are on here tonight that have done it. Uh, when we finish, if anybody wants to share their experience a little bit of how it works, sometimes it makes people cry, okay? Because things start coming out, things that you've suppressed. And sometimes I'll read a statement that it says that you need to work on, the person bursts into tears. Um, and I've learned that we just struck a nerve, but it's a good nerve. It's a nerve that needed to be struck. It's a nerve that something needs to change. We have we cannot carry all this weight and baggage in our mind and don't think that it's gonna um, damage our brain. Studies have shown that people that are under constant stress and over cluttered mind end up with many neurological diseases, uh, Alzheimer's and uh, dementia. It speeds it up because our brain is constantly, constantly at work. People don't sleep right because they're stressed and that affects the brain. And if you don't believe me, the brain is nothing more than an organ, which is basically a muscle. If you put your arm out and you put a 10 pound, eight pound weight on your arm your... out, after a while, those muscles in your arm would get so tired, you can't do it. The brain, being the most powerful organ in our body, can only take so much. And then it's gonna start breaking down. That's why it's important to release. That's why it's important to do all the things we talked about. Forgiving, uh, letting go, uncluttering, uh, releasing the poison, um, don't let it in. Uh, look for something bigger and better and brighter rather than the negative and the cloud that stays in our mind. So the e-box is a great thing to do. Uh, I've done it. Um, a good number of other people do it. Sometimes we have to tell us what we need to clear. Sometimes we have to clear our, our parents, our relatives, because they have put so, so many negative things in our mind that we, we have trouble shaking it. And there's a whole procedure to do it. But the machine tells us, based on the scan, what you need to work on. We always start with a single topic, but then it can move into a multiple topic or what is called transgenerational. It's very, very interesting. Mm, it is. Okay. All right. So, again, if you want to join our private Facebook community support page, the QR code here and the link. And that's about it. It's a huge topic that we discussed tonight. Um, we could go on and on, but um, sometimes it's a little too much for the brain. So, I tell people, people ask me what kind of a company we are, and I tell them that we're a small company with huge success. And I believe that in my heart. Um, I, I'm going to share a little story with you. Uh, yesterday, I went to a wake, and it was one of our clients. And um, 15 years ago, almost to the month, uh, he came in. The time he was... Um, he was 71 and or 72, I believe, something like that, 71. And um, he had cancer, colon cancer. And his doctor had told him, if you need to do chemo and radiation. And he said, I don't want to do it. And they said, well, if you don't do chemo and radiation, you'll be dead in three months. And he asked the doctor, he said, if I do chemo and radiation, what? He said, at best five years. So he came into us and I put him in a, uh, we don't treat cancer. We rebuild the immune system, strongly rebuild the immune system. And I um, put him through a very strict, strict, strict program. And he um, came through it. He lived for 15 years. He had a stroke um, last week. He died Monday. I went to the wake yesterday and I talked to his wife, Donna, and she gave me a huge hug and said, you are, well, first when I talked to her, she asked me to come to the wake as part of the family. I said, well, I'm not part of the family. She said, well, as far as he was concerned, you are family. I'd really like you to come be part of the family. Um, and she said, I, I said, I'm really sorry for what happened. She said, no, don't be sorry. She said, 
You gave him 15 years of healthy living. She said, that's what he got. 15 years of healthy living when he wasn't supposed to live. Three months and max five years. And they told him it'd be a struggle of five years because of all the chemo and radiation you have to go through. So there's such, there's a thing of, uh, he looked at the bright side. He saw something that he could do to take care of himself and take the responsibility for himself to do it. He followed the protocol. She said he followed your protocol right to the day he went to the hospital. When we took him to the hospital, he took all of his supplements, but they wouldn't let him have it. Said he he got a little irritated. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cute, but he was 86. Um, and his wife was um, doing very well because she got another 15 years to spend with him when they thought it was over. So mind, physical, spiritual, all comes together. We have to put them together. We have to work on all of them, not just one. We never treat the symptom. We treat the root cause, okay? So with that said, I just wanted to, um, um, I see some other people signed on. So um, mm -hmm. I'll add them to the list here for our drawings. Does anybody have any questions? No questions? Yes, but I'm trying to figure out how to formulate it. Okay, just give it a shot. Um, I've had sort of uh, some stuff from my past come up again recently. And it's actually to some degree brought a little bit more closure to things I've been struggling with because I finally realized that where my mind was in relation to this person was a fantasy. <laughs> and it finally dawned on me, yes, this person was not who I thought they were. And now I can sort of see that. It took a long time. But all of the anger that people said was going to come and never did is starting to come now. <laughs> So um, I also have one other person in my life that's being very, very difficult through no fault of mine. She just has emotional issues. And unfortunately, she's in a spot where I have to deal with her at least once or twice a month. And uh, I'm not really sure how to get past that. I find myself sleeping a lot more than I probably should meaning when I finally do get to sleep, I sleep well into the day and probably shouldn't do that, but it's easier than facing stuff. So I'm not really sure where to go with that, but I know at least what it's related to. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm being, you, you brought that out. I'm just going to say a couple of things that I would recommend or that I, you might think about. Whenever somebody says through no fault of my own, I'm not a believer in that. I believe that we play a role in some way. Now, I'm not saying you're at fault at anything. I'm saying that your choice is to walk away from that person. Some way, somehow, if they are creating that any stuff for you. But yeah, it, it's a person that sits next to me at an event function where I have a place seat. So I can't, okay. like, I can't really get away from her during that particular time. And that's the only time I'm exposed to her. Okay. Then... You probably need to, going in, you just need to tell yourself, this is for this amount of time, and that's that's all I have to worry about, and I'm just going to ignore, okay? Again, don't let the poison in. Go into it with just a mindset that it's okay, all right? She's not going to bother me. It's okay. For class, and we were having a problem, I would just say, you know what? I can deal with it for the next hour, and after that, I walk away. Done. So... Mm -hmm. I know it sounds easier than it is, but we have to let go and say, why Why do I let it bother me? Why? It's not important to me. So that's the main thing I'm going to say. Um, the other thing is you say it's coming out now for the other person. A lot of times. It oh, you cut out again. Out because that means you're releasing. <laughs> you got to release it. It's got to, what's that? 
What? In the middle of that. Yeah. yeah. In the middle oh, of that. I said it's, out. it's good. It's good that it's coming out because you're releasing. Mm -hmm. It's like toxins in our body. You know, sometimes we have to go through the pain to get the gain. So mental detoxification sometimes is hard. You know, we sometimes we don't want to let it go. Some in says, let it go, work through it, and don't. You wake up in the morning. I want you to get up in the morning, look out at the mirror and say to yourself and speak to your, yourself because we never lie to the person in the mirror. Um, you know what? You're good. You're going to have a great day. Get your butt up going and move. And then things will be better. That's my I suggestion. I just hope it doesn't take a long time. This is a like, really bad time of year because I'm so focused on work that it, there's not a lot of time for me in there. Okay, but we always have to find time for me. No matter how busy it gets, we got to take time for ourselves somewhere, somehow. Mm -hmm. Mine's on the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> that would not work for me. <laughs> Anybody else? John, I have hey, a question. Else? Jane, you have something? Yeah, maybe you could get, you know, if there's an, a long standing problem that you know um you're going to have to deal with for a long time and it's kind of hard you know it's a hard thing to to face and deal with um it's not like you can just resolve it you know um i know you have to let go and let god um take control but it's still a difficult thing to do and sometimes you know the um the importance of it is right front in your brain and it comes back. So can you talk about those longstanding issues that you don't have a lot of control over, but you, you know, you, you're trying to ask for guidance on what can I do to make this better, but it's still ongoing. Can, can you, well, I, don't know I would need to know more what the long standing thing is. I mean, if it's something like, uh, uh, we just mentioned a relationship, uh, you know, uh, or a lot would depend on what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, some things are much easier to let go than others. So if let's just hypothetically say somebody is taking care of a parent and the parent was abusive when you were growing up and you, mm -hmm. you're aware of you all the time. Um, If it's something, so it would a lot of it would depend on, on, you know, my mother, the way she raised me. But you're really cutting out know, a lot, John. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't yeah. know. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. There's a couple questions. Okay. Um, how do you find the root cause? Where do you start? Okay, where where you start is with yourself. And you start loving yourself. You have to love yourself before anybody else can love you. You have to. Don't ever think that you can be angry at yourself. It doesn't work that way. You have to love yourself. and take care of yourself for other people to feel that um, emotion all right so you have to start with yourself and tell yourself these things don't matter to me anymore and it's not like when you you say that they just run away no but it's constant my time to think about it and worry about it. it's not worth it all right so we go through this life one time. That's it. So why worry about all this stuff that happened way back here? But we got to tell ourselves it's not worth it. It's not important to me. So that's where you. That's where you uh, the root cause is in our own mind. And we start with ourself. We start by saying enough. It's like people that eat too much, drink too much. The two gentlemen that I just finished a program in Hartford. 
uh, drank way too much. And one day they just came in and said, we're done drinking. We're, that's how you do it. Done. Okay. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. Okay. Um, another question. Um, by the feeling of frustration. Um, I had that somewhere. Yeah, but, but, yeah. It doesn't have the, the not a rain phone for that. Oh, so no. So I can find that out for you. And we all get frustrated, okay? And when we get frustrated, it's not like Okay, you're frustrated because your computer doesn't work tonight, but uh, that doesn't mean it's going to break down an order. It's long-term frustration. So I want everybody to understand. Now, it's kind of like eating sugar. You eat sugar, does it do some damage? Tiny amount, that time you eat it, if you keep doing it, it's going to create a lot of problems. So you want to try to get away from frustration um, as much as you can for the person that asked that. Those. I don't. I don't want to say names. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Um, anybody else? You're glitching more now. <laughs> that was early. Oh. That was six thirty six. Okay. Any other questions? Thoughts? Here's on. From Saint Tom. We're all over the world here. Huh? It's world. all over the world, yeah. All right. Well, let's. Okay. No. No other questions. Everybody's got it all figured out. Their mind's all clear. You know what you got to do. <laughs> if you don't, you call. You pick up the phone, you call. We talk. Neil, I want a thumbs up. Everybody knows, understands that. I think, we're fro I think we're frozen or they're frozen because nobody's moving. I must have to recording.